We live in a world that constantly seems to throw worry and anxiety our way. I think we've seen this amplified this year particularly. Even before this year's coronavirus, there was plenty of opportunity for us to feel anxious. We only have to think of subjects such as nuclear arms, the environment, politics, wars, as well as more personal issues such as sickness, relationship breakdown, loss of jobs or careers, losing loved ones. I know it doesn't take much to send me into a spiral of worry and I end up spending a disproportionate amount of time scrutinising all the possible solutions, where often there are none, or at least they're not normally within my control. Being a Christian doesn't exempt us from having to deal with these problems. However, the Bible does give us advice on how we should confront anxiety in our lives. Paul writes in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Paul writes as he is sitting in jail, his life under threat for preaching about Jesus. I think he's every right to feel worried and anxious, yet he says, in every situation, pray. And with thanksgiving. The way Paul speaks portrays a God who is longing to hear our prayers. Like a father, he wraps his arms around a little child. And the result, Paul tells us, is that the peace of God that transcends all understanding will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. You see, our biggest problem is our sin, which Jesus has paid the price for on the cross by dying in our place and taking our punishment. And when we focus on that, it helps to put our other problems into perspective. We are loved so much that God sent his son to die and rise again for us, defeating death. And he doesn't abandon us at that point. Paul knew that as he wrote these verses, he knew that only God could provide true peace in difficult situations. So I know that the next time I'm sat up at three o'clock in the morning with a cup of tea at the kitchen table, worrying, I need to remember Paul's advice and turn to God in prayer rather than rely on my own strength. You may have heard of the book Too Busy Not to Pray by Bill Hybels. I'm going to read a short extract where he summarises this passage in his own words. Come into my presence, says God. Talk to me and share all your concerns. I'm keenly interested in you because I'm your father. I'm able to help because all power in heaven and earth is mine. And I'm listening closely, hoping I will hear your voice. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you delight to hear our prayers and long for us to talk to you. Please forgive us when we try and deal with situations on our own. Please remind us that we need to turn to you in all circumstances, that prayer should be our first thought. We recognise that we are weak and so often fail to pray when we should. Help us and teach us to be like Paul and to pray with thanksgiving about all things, knowing that Jesus has dealt with our biggest problem, our sin and rebellion against you. We ask that your peace, that transcends all understanding, would be known in each of our lives today and always. Amen.